Oh, hello guys. Welcome back. So, <laughs> you want the good news or the even better news first? Oh, dear Lord. So, um, when I was working with the Voodoo on Loa, I, I worked with Ogu most of all, and he, he learned pretty fast not to give me dreams because I react in dreams the same way I react in, um, meditation. And the way I learned meditation, I was, I was going to a therapist at the time, and I said, well, what if something goes wrong, you know? Because people can sometimes be afraid to do guided meditation, even though they feel like they're safe. You know, supposed to feel like you're safe in your safe place. What if something goes wrong? And she's like, well, it's meditation. You want a shotgun or something, you can have it with you. <laughs> I had a very practical, you know, a therapist. And she was like, there's nothing wrong because you're just, you're just defending yourself. So if something does go wrong, boom, you know, just, 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 just get rid of it. Because, you know, I would meditate while I was at the therapist and then I go home and I meditate on a daily basis. And so if anything surprises me in meditation, I'll blow that fucker to kingdom come. <laughs> Don't surprise me. It's not like I've shot bunnies or something cute. It's like if something surprises me or is coming towards me with aggressive attempt, I'm blowing that fucker away. I don't know if it's something my mind made up or it's something that wandered in. It's not getting a chance to explain itself. Ogu learned not to surprise me in dreams either. <laughs> he would set up various things for me in dreams. I didn't realize he was doing it. And every time he was like, what? did you go through that dream and do that? You killed 20 people! Because they were being aggressive and they needed taken care of. <laughs> it's like, that was not what the thing was supposed to be about. And then he realized it was just automatic. It was something that I have automatically trained and ingrained into me because of the practice I did with my therapist. You frighten me or surprise me in a dream or meditation, I'm blowing you away. I, I, you don't come up behind me and surprise me. So, I'm doing meditation yesterday, and I thought I'd gotten a challenge. I went in to do the meditation, and I set it in a place where I would know I normally don't go. I actually set in a video game I played recently, didn't show you guys. And I'm like, this is like fish in a barrel, but I didn't say anything. And I, I go in there, and I'm meditating, you know, and I'm crouched by this elevator. And whatever this is, and I'm thinking it's some kind of tupla, it's some kind of thought form or something. It's been menacing me and challenging me to come face. And I'm like, okay. And it appears behind me in the flesh, so to speak, in the meditation. And standing behind me, looking like somebody. I didn't even have to think about this, guys. I just pivoted and I shot it point blank with a shotgun. It, it, it got this surprised look on his face and went flying backwards and then slumped down against the wall. And then Lucky's beside me with huge eyes. And he goes, you shot him. You shot him. And I go, I'm pretty sure if it was your brother, he would have ducked. <laughs> You're all like, fuck. And, you know, I came out of meditation. I'm talking to you guys. And I'm like, yeah, I got that nasty fall form, whatever it was. And lucky when you tell this morning, goes, I don't know how to tell you this. But guess who you actually shot? I'm like, that's interesting. And I don't even think he took it personally. I just, I've been feeling crowded and pushed and everything lately. And I'm like, look, I'm, I'm not doing it. Whatever way, whatever this was, wanted me to do it. It's going to get out of my way. And, you know, I, I want to try to have an open household. I want to try to have, you know, more peaceful environment. And, you know, um, that troll that was on, you know, if I was talking about peace and, and love, oh, that wasn't right. And then if I started talking about, you know, having one to serve in the military, that wasn't right either. And we Americans don't know anything. And I'm like, listen, you 10-year-old snot. Uh, you guys know my temper. The fuck you say about America in the first place? And so forth and so on. Um, uh, I never had any luck with the old man. I could never get him to stay with the healer mode. I could never get him to be the scholar. I could never get him to be whatever. All these other women have this luck with him. Always defaults to the god of black ops and death and destruction. I think maybe because uh, when I first came in, the only thing I found, and I thought she was an expert, was Galena. Please don't read her shit. 
And, you know, she has this very twisted work view of the old man. And I'd already said to Loki, I said, I'm sorry, but I said, I think your brother's so tainted by that. I'm, I'm never going to get him to behave well. I said, I think it's so deep in the subconscious that he's never going to behave well. It just occurred to me what I did. One second, please, guys, these allergies. Whew, sorry about that. And, you know, uh... I just wanted left alone. I wanted to have my freedom. I wanted to have my peace. And I'm like, look, I've tried for years. And whether it was the old man or whether it was something I made up, I'm like, I can't get you to teach me healing. I can't get you to work magically with me. I can't get you to do all this. I keep getting the warrior and I'm sick and tired of, you know, all these trolls besides that they're always coming and rattling my cage. And, you know, I said, I, I don't want to work with you anymore. Whether this was Odin or it was a manifestation that came up because that was the only way I could see the old man or what it was, it's not going to be around anymore. One second again. I am sorry. And so, yeah, that's the story of how I accidentally shot the old father in meditation. And, you know, um, I'm still alive. But I think I got my point across, and it was it was just, it was instinctual, guys. It wasn't really, I knew something was going to happen. I'm like, okay, if you're dumb enough to challenge me to come face you in meditation, I knew what was going to happen. But I kind of let myself more feel fear, so whatever it was challenging me wouldn't know it. And it felt like it was coming real close to me in meditation, like inches, not even inches, like right up against my face. So if this was Odin, this was a very poor tactic, and it kept feeling like whatever it was kept trying to test me and trying to get me to be afraid. And I'm not, I'm not saying it's the Alpha, because what do I know what it was? And it was trying to terrorize me, and it was trying to make my heart beat faster and faster and faster. And to be sure, it was working, but I was just defiant in the fear. And I went down into meditation, even while it was making my heart jackhammer. I'm like, okay, bitch, you want to dance? We're doing dance. This is the last thing you're ever going to do. And despite all the terror it was making me feel, I knew what would happen. I knew I had the training. I knew I had the experience. And it, I knelt down by that elevator. I was like, well, let's look good and helpless. And, of course, it popped up because these things usually aren't all that bright. And I just automatically, without even having to think about it, I pivoted. That beautiful old shotgun was in my hands, and it got both barrels straight to the chest. It went flying back, and my only thought of sadness was, should have shot it in the head. And, but it was dead, and that was the main thing. And then Lucky's here instantly, and he's like, you shot him! I'm like, well, you know me. You know what I've trained for. You never surprise me in meditation because you know better. I know you shot him. I'm not going to be bothering anybody anymore, is it? So I, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was a thought form. I, 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 I don't think I'm the first person in history to knock the all father on his ass with a shotgun. I'd be mildly surprised if I was. But, you know, it's... I don't know. He's gotten captured in the lore by humans. There was a time he got tied up, and Loki had to go treasure hunting, and there was a time that he got tied up between two fires. So, at times, it seems he can be overpowered by humans, but I very much doubt I shot the All Father in the chest, and he went flying backwards. <laughs> that was so fun, whatever it was. I was like, listen, fucker, you get in my way. I need to do peace, love, and healing, and you're getting in my way. Because I'm an American. <laughs> we love our guns. We love them so much. So it was, you know, there's this, uh, have you guys seen it? I, it? I put it on, I put it on one of my boards. I forget what it is. It's this girl's my spirit animal. It's this little girl at a gun show and she's got this huge ordinance and she's holding it like this and she's like, <gasps> And, and, and all the joy in the road is in her face. She's so happy with these guns. And it was like me. My dad was in the military. My whole family was. So I'm kind of like, my dad was in life, but I'm like a military brat. And there's this guy behind her, must be like a weapon salesman. And he's laughing with joy because she's just so damn happy to see this beautiful weapon. <laughs> uh, that was me. My dad would like take me to, you know, flight shows and tank shows and we went to Gettysburg a lot, and, you know, as bad as the home situation was, I learned a deep respect and appreciation for the military, and weapons are pretty. We used to go to, um, 
the Army Depot for f not the Army Depot. Um, what do you call them? Those excess military goods stores, whatever they're called. We used to go to those all the time, and I would read military manuals for fun. And you know, I, I once I was old enough and I was responsible, I could have all the knives and guns I wanted. Um, welcome to my family. <laughs> but anyhow. I don't know what it was. I really don't think I knocked the old father on his ass. <laughs> but whatever it was, I, it feels like it was gone now. And this morning I had a dream of a white lion, which to me is a good positive sign. And I dream of a guy that you would think was Odin, but he was, again, dressed all in white. And he was crouching, like, way over there, just kind of looking at me like, hmm, <laughs> this one's feisty. <laughs> but I don't think I knocked Odin on his ass. I don't think this will happen, but... It was just, I think, all it, all that rage that came out of me, it did feel like bear rage. I do have bear as a totem. And, you know, we can sit here to the end of days and say people didn't have totems like that in the old country or whatever. I have totems. I'm a witch. I have bear as a totem. And it was a mother bear rage of how dare you come in and destroy. I'm trying to build this beautiful home filled with peace and light. And you're coming over here wanting to make it all weaponized and make it a military compound. I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> so. And if it was, if, if by some strange fluke it was the old man, he got exactly what he built. So <laughs> he got knocked on his ass. Um, you know, that's kind of one of the things. If you're going to try to build people into an aggressive military unit or whatever the hell it was going on. And they turn against you. That's your own damn fault. You made them aggressive. You made them mean. It's like teaching a dog to fight, which you should not. But if you teach a dog to fight and it bites your ass, you got what you deserve. Karma, bitch. So, this channel. But yeah. um, I pushed all the gods out there for And then I was just talking to God. And, you know, talking about this stuff. And it felt like the demons came back and the demons were like, you knocked him on his ass. Ah. And I, I, I wasn't really, you know, listening to them because I'm like, the demons have a good reason to hate the old man because he was like trying to push everybody else out. And I'm like, well, they're just celebrating that in effigy he got knocked on his ass because it couldn't have been Odin. It was just my way of dealing with something or blowing off steam or something. And it felt like everyone else came back and the International House of Awesome was open. But, you know, I, I, I think I got rid of any Nordic interest in me ever again. I think they're like, damn, she's unstable. Asmodeus is very proud. Asmodeus is, you know, up, wing spread, tail wagging, like, that's my girl. She knocked him on his ass. So, you know, and Ogu is just chortling to himself and, like, smoking one of his cigars. I'm like, <laughs> I told him that was going to happen. <laughs> You know, he thinks it's funny. <laughs> he thinks it's hilarious. He learned the hard way. Don't try to train me in dreams or train me in, you know, meditation. It's just not going to work. Um, and I apologize to him. But once he find, found out it was something I just trained myself to do, he's like, well, that's useful for that. But he couldn't, you know, not get me to attack automatically <laughs> in dreams. And I don't attack everyone I see in dreams. If they're peaceful, I'm too, I'm fine. If they're the least bit aggressive, I'm sorry, man, you gotta go. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I used to have, you know, bad dreams. And then when I, you know, you learn to do that lucid dreaming, you have very less bad dreams, whether you believe it's something coming in or you're facing your fears, whatever it is, you know, takes care of things. So, if you guys like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, look, he's like, you're mean, <laughs> I'll see you guys later, bye-bye.